it was a high scoring game this one South Africa uh, winning the toss and electing to bat first and getting very close to 200 runs that was the big difference but we had a beautiful night for T20 international cricket and the bottom result was that South Africa win by 20 runs which is not a great deal if you think about it but South Africa outplayed Bangladesh presentation time welcome to the post-match presentation of this KFC T20 International. We'd like to thank KFC for their continued support of T20 Cricket and the mini cricket program that they put in place. The presentation party where we've got Zach and we've also got Modern Daba who's made a magnificent contribution, a long-standing com um, contribution to Free State Cricket Union and through her sheer determination Modern has managed to maintain and grow the KFC Cricket program in the region over the last two decades. Modern, thanks and well done for your work here at the Free State Cricket Union. Okay, Shaki Bulasan, the captain of Bangladesh, come and have a word with us. When you guys had uh, finished at the, the crease at the halfway stage, 195, do you think that was too much or you thought it was gettable? I thought uh, <clears throat> they batted uh, really well, especially in the last five overs. Uh, we pulled them back in middle overs, uh, but the uh, last five overs, I think, uh, cost us the match. Uh, uh, we gave uh, 62 runs in five overs, so that didn't help. Uh, overall, I thought uh, we are uh, 15, 20 runs given more than what we should have. Uh, but uh, I think uh, and at the 10 overs mark, we were right in the, the game, uh, but we couldn't finish it well. We had a great start, but uh, they didn't capitalize on that. Yeah, talking about pulling it back, I mean, they've got a very good batting lineup, South Africa. So you guys did a good job in the middle there with the spinners as well. Yeah, I think the spinners bowled uh, really well on that track. Uh, obviously, there was a little bit for the spinners, and we bowled in uh, good areas. But uh, as I said, uh, last five over cost us the game, and a little bit of fielding here and there gave, gave them uh, 15, 20 more runs. Talking about your batting, you mentioned you went off to a good start. South Africa would have been worried at one stage that you guys had set up a good platform and just couldn't follow it through? Yeah, as I said, uh, first 10 overs, I think we were, we were right, right in there. We just needed to continue doing that, and we couldn't do that. Uh, they kept on taking wickets, and uh, that put us uh, a lot of pressure. So uh, there, are, there are some areas we can improve, and uh, there is one more game to be played, and we can be competitive. Areas that you can improve, your dot ball count was double what South Africa's was. Is that something you guys are aware of to make keeping the strike turning over? Yes, we obviously talked about it, uh, but uh, at the match we need to, you know, uh, apply ourselves to play less dot balls. That that put us a lot of under pressure when we play so many dot balls, and we always look to hit boundaries and missing out, uh, you know, b ball. So uh, we, we have to be, you know, there sh should be aggression and sensible batting as well. So that's what we need to do, and hopefully. B uh, guys batting in the middle overs uh, need to do that uh, regularly. Okay, well, there's still a game at Poch. Maybe you can square the series. Good luck. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next of all, the winning captain on the night, uh, JP Dumini. Well then, JP, after your batting performance, were you happy with that score? You thought you could have got more, or was it you felt like you had overstretched yourself? No, I thought that was a was good score. Uh, I thought they bowled pretty well in their death overs. Uh, got a few Yorkers in the guys struggled to get it out, but great partnership there by uh, by Fudgy and David to get us to 195. And then when you got the ball in the hand, as a, as a captain, you would have felt under a bit of pressure up front. Yeah, we kind of knew that they were going to come out guns blazing in that first six overs. Uh, got away from us a little bit, but you know the guys stayed calm. Uh, you know, backed their skills, their variations, and. You know, got the wickets in the end, which was great. You say you stay calm, but it's not the easiest thing to do. I mean, that frenetic pace that you have in T20 internationals, how do you guys go about that? Yeah, it's quite challenging, especially when uh, the umpire's in your ear the whole time that you're two, uh, two minutes down. But uh, it's just something that you've got to try and think on your feet. Um, you know, the guys are pretty good in terms of knowing what their fields are. Um, so we spoke long and hard about making sure that we don't wait until the, the, the top of our mark to, to change the field. Uh, just trying to buy time as, as, as best we can. And the new guys on the side, debutante and a couple of new faces we haven't seen, happy with the way they went? Very happy. Uh, I thought their the variations were, were, were spot on and I think the way they used it was, was really good and the fields that they set for that. Uh, execution, definitely 8 out of 10, but we know that in this game there's always, there's always room for improvement. So hopefully we can, can take it up a notch in, in Poch's room. Talk about room for improvement. What would you discuss before the next game in Poch? I just being ruthless you know we we said before the start of this game that we want to make sure that it's 2-0 at the end of the series uh so just more of the same we we speak long and hard also about our standards and you know we, when we uh, walked out on the field we made sure that we spoke about 170 being that target trying to keeping up uh, keeping them under that so i thought we did reasonably well to do that okay well done we'll see you in patch thank you 
Man of the match for his performance of 49 of 27 deliveries is A.B. de Villiers. He'll receive his man of the match award from Modern Darbe. Have a bit of a pose, get his picture taken. Look at us. Look at us, please. Look at us. My number one fan. He has told me, who inspired you to be in the cricket? Moda's giving him some questions yet before he gets this. Okay, he's going to, we're going to ask him the questions. Okay, there we go. Moda was asking the question, who inspired you to play the way you did? <laughs> you did, Paul. Yeah. Not me. I learned a lot from you and uh, John T back in the day. So I'd, I'd say John T probably inspired me a lot when I was growing up. Must have enjoyed that again. I mean, it's nice to come out. You feel like you're in good touch and just be as positive as you like to be. I was a bit disappointed getting out there. I would have loved to get 70 plus. Um, that's when you really make a difference for the team. Um, but I guess Quinny and I had a really nice partnership there uh, at a crucial stage of the game. Um, so yeah, we we're pretty happy to get that partnership going. You weren't the only one who was disappointed. There's a couple of people on the bank who were disappointed. They wanted to see you knock someone in there. When you come to the crease, how much communication goes in before you get there, betting at number three? Um, and then when you get there to assess with the partner who's still there, how the surf is playing, what a good score would be? Yeah, I believe a lot in sitting on the side and assessing as much as you can. I was watching closely the, um, the kind of shots which, that was working, whether the pitch is taking turn and so forth. And then the minute I came out there, um, Quinny told me there's quite a bit of pace on the wicket um, and a bit of bounce, which is um, something we really enjoy. So, and that makes the margin of error really small for the bowler. And luckily for us, the Bangladeshi bowlers tried quite a bit in that first six overs. I think they were feeling the pressure and they missed the mark quite a lot. I don't think it was a, a slow ball wicket the first six overs we batted. And I think they bowled too many slow balls maybe. And we cashed in on those. And we didn't really have to try too much. Um, it was definitely not an overheat kind of wicket. You can just time the ball. And um, when they missed the mark, the ball went to the boundary and, and we cashed in with that. You've been in a few positions for South Africa. Do you think three is your best? I really enjoyed it in this format, um, especially with the guys up there in the first six overs. You can, you can really uh, capitalize. And once you have that foundation in place, it's, it's nice to take a big, which I didn't do today. So um, some work to do in, the, do in that apartment. Took a nice catch as well, enjoying the new lights here at Bloom. I enjoyed that. It's Robbie's first game. It's important for me to, to get him on the board, to help him with that. Um, he was obviously a bit nervous in his first two overs, and um, to get him on the board of that first week, it was great. And that's a nice welcome for him into the team. OK, well played yourself. We look forward to some performance in Posh. Thanks, Paul. So that's the news from the captains and the man of the match. Hope you enjoyed their point of view, and we'll see you for the second T20 International in Pochestrum. Sean, thank you very much. Interesting, the, uh, the, the, the comments from uh, A.B. de Villiers, some nice insight for him as well. Right, just a reminder about some cricket coming up on Supersport. We've got plenty for you. Supersport 2 announces this is tomorrow. This is the second T20 international between Pakistan and also Sri Lanka. Then we've got the Women's Ashes, the third one day, Australia, England. And then it's uh, early in the morning. So clearly uh, an early start on Supersport 5, and that's Sunday morning, just. And then we've got war. We go to Zimbabwe. We go to Bulawayo. This is the second test, day one. Zimbabwe versus the West Indies. The West Indies winning that uh, first one in Bulawayo. That's uh, the second and final test match on Supersport 12 on Sunday morning. And still there's more. India versus New Zealand. Now, that's interesting. That's won all that series. That's the third and final one day. Up. And that's on Supersport 11 on Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we have got plenty going on on Supersport, that's for sure. And then, of course, we come to the final game of the Bangladesh Tour. That is South Africa to Bangladesh. It's the second KFC T20 International. And just note that start time. That's a 2 o'clock in the afternoon start time. Not 6 o'clock as we had it tonight. 2 o'clock a day game in Potterstrom. And you can join us then on Supersport 2. All righty, thanks for being with us today. Plenty of action. I hope you enjoyed it. The track was terrific. Plenty of boundaries. And we're going to catch you on Sunday. Welcome to the City of Roses. You know, it's summer in the judicial capital of South Africa when T20 cricket hits Bloemfontein. It's got him. So, of course, Bangladesh wanted to pick up a wicket early, but they wouldn't have wanted to see this. Extraordinary play. He can be devastating. Bang! Gone for four. Oh, yes. Oh, that's fantastic. The offside this time. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And he's clapped that. And it's gone. That's a beauty. Smoked it. That's closer. 
It's the finger going up. Sean George is taking his time. He's put the finger up. Up it's gone. The clock is not happy. South Africa end 195 for four. A good score. Beautiful evening here in Pumfontein. The weather is absolutely perfect. Shot. Oh, that's a start. Bang. Nicely played. Good shot for four. Shot. Right, he's got that. He's got all of that. That's gone a long way. And the crowd goes wild. So congratulations to South Africa, tried for a few new faces and uh, come successful.